Now I want to talk briefly about different ways of uh, solving the inverse kinematics problem, uh, which can be solved. Uh, I mean, there are many ways of solving the problem, but there are two main ways, one of them geometrically, and the other one is algebraically. Uh, the geometric solution can be achieved by decomposing the spatial geometry uh, into several plane geometry. And of course, plane geometry problems have their own tools for uh, solving them. Uh, so once we decompose our general um, uh, problem into plane geometry problems, then we can use the tools to solve uh, each one of the plane geometry problems. All right. Uh, for the al algebraic solution, uh, we can achieve that by comparing elements from the general transformation matrix that we obtained from forward kinematics to the desired transformation matrix that we are given uh, and we are commanded to go to. Okay, so if we compare elements from both uh, the uh, desired transformation matrix and the uh, general transformation matrix that we obtained from forward kinematics, then uh, we can uh, extract some equations and solve these equations for uh, the joint angles that we're trying to find. Now, in this course, we're going to only look and, and talk about the algebraic uh, solution for inverse kinematics problems. Uh, and we're going to see how we can achieve um, and find a solution when it exists. Now, let's take an example about how to find uh, inverse kinematics solution uh, using algebraic uh, methods. So for this example here, for the 3R planar manipulator shown, the general transformation matrix that defines frame 3 relative to frame 0 uh, is, find through, is found through forward kinematics as follows. So this is the transformation matrix that defines frame 3 relative to frame 0. And as we can see here, we have rotation about Z and we have translations about X and Y. Okay, so this is the robot here. Uh, I'm not going to talk about forward kinematics that we covered in chapter uh, 3. We're going to go straight to chapter 4 and inverse kinematics. <clears throat> now the question is, use inverse kinematics to find the solution for the joint variables in terms of x, y, and phi for the robot to reach the following Cartesian pose in frame 3. So this is the desired transformation matrix, and it's in terms of x and y and rotation about z by the amount of phi. Okay, so this is the desired rotation matrix. And we need to find theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 uh, in terms of x, y, and phi. Now, the second portion of the question is find the solution again uh, if the variables, this x1, y, and phi, are x equals 3, y equals 4, and phi equals 150 degrees. And in this case, we are given also the length lengths, uh, L1 equals to 2 units, and L2 equals to 5 units. And then we need to plot the solution or multiple, if it's multiple solutions, then we need to plot multiple solutions that solve this problem. Now let's look at the solution here and how we can approach the solution. The first thing is we need to compare the transformation matrices between the desired transformation and the transformation, the general transformation that was uh, obtained through uh, Ford kinematics. Okay, so. Uh, I placed these two transformations here that are given in the question in this slide just temporarily so I can do the comparison and extract some equations out of them and then I'll remove these out of the slide. So the first comparison I'm going to do, I'm going to compare this first element, first row, first column, and second element from the second row, first column, to their uh, counterparts on the desired transformation matrix. Okay, so from T11 and T21 these two elements, we can say that cosine phi, which is right here, cosine phi, equals to this, cosine 1, 2, 3. Of course, cosine 1, 2, 3 means cosine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3. Okay? And then the second equation is sine theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 equals to sine phi. And that's what we have here uh, as well. So these two equations here, I call them equation 1 because they all feed to the same single equation. Uh, so I'm going to call them equation number one. And then I'm going to look at T14, first row, fourth column. This right here equals to its counterpart on the other side right here. Okay, so x equals to L1C1 plus L2C12 right here. 
and I'm going to call this equation number 2. The third equation I'm extracting here is T24. That's the second row and fourth column. And the counterpart for this is uh, Y. So Y here equals to L1 S1 plus L2 S1 2. And I call this third equation. Okay. Now I'm going to remove these two matrices. I don't need them anymore. And I'm going to look at how to manipulate these uh, three equations. And I have to solve for the three unknowns. The three unknowns are theta 1, theta 2, and theta 3. And I'll need to find them in terms of x, y, and phi. Okay, so if I square and add equations 2 and 3, these two equations, if I square them and add them, okay, I will get x square plus y square from these two squares equals to L1 square plus L2 square plus 2 L1 L2 C2. All right, so of course I'm going to get some more uh, terms, but if I open these terms up, I put here temporarily, I put appendix A for simplification. Um, I have sine 1, 2 equals to this and cosine 1, 2 equals to this. So I can always open up this sine and cosine of 1, 2 and then uh, do some more simplification. So this is after simplification, I'm going to get this equation right here uh, after I square and add the two. And if you notice here, the only uh, variable that I have or the unknown I have is C2. So this equation basically I can use uh, to find cosine of theta 2. Okay, if I solve this now, this now for cosine theta 2, I find that uh, cosine theta 2 equals to x squared plus y squared minus L1 squared minus L2 squared divided by 2 L1 L2. Okay, now to find theta 2, I don't just invert this or find the cosine inverse of uh, cosine theta 2 uh, because that would not give me um, a solution that uh, could be uh, could be true or not so i need both the sine and cosine so that i can find out uh, the correct angle uh, including the quadrant where this angle is okay so uh, to complement this uh, again uh, for this to be true and for it to exist, cosine theta 2 has to be, of course, between negative 1 and 1. Uh, so if this quantity is more than or less than uh, negative 1 and more than 1, that means a solution does not exist for this. Okay. Now from trigonometry, we know that sine and cosine uh, have relationship here. If we have sine squared plus cosine squared of the same angle, that should equal to 1. So from that, we can extract this and find uh, sine of theta 2 in terms of cosine of theta 2. Okay, so if we substitute cosine of theta 2 in here, then we can find sine of theta 2, uh, this right here. And of course, because we have a square root here, that means we have plus or minus, and both of these are valid solutions. So here we can start to see that we're going to have two solutions for this problem. Okay. Now that we have uh, the sine and cosine, we can use uh, a tan 2 to find theta 2. So a tan 2 equals to sine 2 and cosine 2. Uh, we use them in this function in MATLAB, and we substitute these uh, with the corresponding equations that we found here. Okay. Now remember, I'm going to substitute for the cosine. It has one value only. So cosine theta 2 has one value, but sine theta 2 has two values. Okay, so I, that's why I have here positive and negative. So I'm going to run this equation twice, once with a positive sign and one with a negative sign. And then I'll get two solutions, which include two theta twos. Okay, so I'll have theta two first solution and theta two second solution, and both of them would be valid solutions. Similar to what we did in finding theta two, uh, we can use equations one and two and the value of theta two or the values of theta two so that we can find theta 1 uh, as shown here. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the details of how we found this. It's only math. So uh, I'll be using equation 1 and 2. And remember, we had two values for theta 2. So I'm going to evaluate this once with theta 2 first solution and again with theta 2 second solution. And that would give me theta 1 twice, uh, so two solutions. So I'll have theta 1 first solution and theta 1 second solution. Okay. And this would be a tan 2 of y and x minus a tan 2 of L2, S2 
uh, and L1 plus L2 C2. Okay, so this C2 here will be different for theta 2 solution 1 and theta 2 solution 2. All right, so that gives me uh, two solutions for theta 1 that are valid for my inverse kinematics problem. Uh, now, similarly, we can go back to equation number 1 so that we can find theta 3. Uh, if you recall, uh, we have theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 equals to phi, and that equals to a tan 2 of sine phi and cosine phi. Okay, if we solve this for theta 3, we can find out that theta 3 equals to a tan 2 of sine phi and cosine phi minus theta 1 minus theta 2. Again, we have two sets of uh, theta 1 and theta 2. So if we use the first solution for theta 1 and theta 2, we're going to find theta 3 first solution. If we look at the second solution for theta 1 and theta 2, then we'll find a second solution for theta 3. So theta 3 will also have two solutions, one for each theta 1 and theta 2. All right, so by this here, we already found theta 1 and theta 2 and theta 3 in terms of x, y, and phi. And that completes this part of um, the problem. Uh, the next part of the problem is when we have specific values for x, y, and phi. So here we're given a value for x to be 3 units, a value for y to be uh, 4 units, and a value for phi to be 150 degrees um, uh, of angle. And we're also given L1 to be 2 units and L2 to be 5 units. So we have all the numbers, both the constants and uh, these uh, uh, Cartesian coordinates. So if we substitute this in the desired transformation matrix that was that was given in the in the uh, problem, we're gonna come up with this t desired. So we substituted. If you remember here, we had uh, cosine phi minus sine phi and so forth. So if I substitute the phi with 150, then I'll get these numbers. And here I had an x and y, and these are given in numbers as well. So I have them here, uh, as you can see. Okay, so now this is my desired transformation matrix with numbers, and I'll need to evaluate all these theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 using these numbers. Uh, when I substitute the values for x, y, and phi, uh, I'm going to start substituting here with the equations for cosine and sine uh, theta 2. Uh, so if you recall this one here, it was uh, x plus y squares and then minus L1 minus L2 squares and divided by 2 L1 L2. So I substituted here uh, 3 for x, 4 for y, and then 2 for L1 and then 5 for L2. Okay, so if I evaluate this, I get cosine theta 2 to be equal to negative 0 0.2. And I can, I can also sub, uh, substitute for sine theta 2 which was the square root of 1 minus cosine theta 2 square. Since I have cosine theta 2 here, I can just square it and place it here. And that will give me again two solutions because of the square root, and that's 0 0.98 plus and minus. <clears throat> okay, now since I have this, I can go ahead and uh, substitute for theta 2 equation. We found this equation earlier in earlier steps. All I have to do now is substitute the values for what I have uh, in this part of the question. So I have here a tan 2, uh, and this is plus or minus 0.98. Uh, so this was plus or minus uh, this value for sine theta 2. And then here I have cosine theta 2, which is negative 0.2. So if I, if I evaluate this, I get two different angles, one for the positive and one for the negative. And that would be 1.7721 radians and negative 1.7721 radians. Okay, so these are two valid solutions for theta 2. Now going on to theta 1, again I can substitute, this was a tan 2 of y and x, uh, both y and x are given, y was 4 and x was 3, and then minus a tan 2, and this was uh, L2, I substituted with 5, and this is S2, which I have here plus or minus uh, 0.98. So I substituted plus or minus 0.98. And then this was L1 plus L2 C2. So L2 here, uh, L1 here is 2, and then L2 is 5, and C2 is negative 0 0.2, and that's why we have the negative right here. So if we, if we evaluate this, we're going to get negative 0 0.4422 for the first solution. That's when we get the positive here, 
And then if we evaluate with the negative here, then we get the second solution, 2.2968 radians. Okay? So now these are two solutions for theta 1. Now we can do similarly for theta 3, use the equations that we found earlier. So this was 8, 8, and, uh, 8 and 2 of uh, these two uh, cosine and sine phi's. Uh, since cosine and sine phi are given now, so I just substituted them here. And then plus uh, uh, 0 0.44, which was theta 1. Uh, this was uh, actually uh, theta 1, yeah. And then minus theta 2, which was uh, negative 1.7721. So I'm going to substitute this twice, once using the first set. So theta 2 first uh, solution and theta 1 first solution. And that gives me 1.2881 radians. And then if I substitute these with the second solution right here, okay, so I'm taking the second solution for theta 2 and second solution for theta 1, uh, and I substitute them here, then I get the second solution for theta 3, which is 2.0933 radians. Okay, so now I have two sets of solutions for theta 1, theta 2, theta 3. Uh, so these are corresponding to two different configurations that would give me uh, the same end effector uh, pose uh, that was given in the example. So the two sets of solutions uh, for theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 are as follows. For configuration 1, I took the first uh, solution for each theta. So I took this theta 2 and this theta 1 and this theta 3. And I placed them right here in radians. And then I conver converted the radian into degrees here. And then for the second configuration, I took the second solutions for each one of these angles. So I took this solution for theta 2, this solution for theta 1, and this solution for theta 3. And I placed them right here. And again, I converted them into degrees so that we can visualize and see how they look like. The last part of this example here is to plot these uh, configurations. Uh, so I used MATLAB here to plot uh, both configurations. Uh, this is configuration one when we had uh, these three first uh, joint angles for theta one, theta two, theta three. So if you can see here, this is our three R robot. This is first joint, second joint, and third joint. And this is the X and Y of the end effector, uh, assuming that third length here is zero. So joint three is right uh, at the end of link number two. Okay, so this is our first configuration here. And then this is the drawing for the second configuration that I have. So if you can notice here, both of these uh, configurations lead to the exact same position and orientation of the end effector. Okay, so this end effector here is at four in the Y and at three in the X. And this is also at 4 in the y and 3 in the x. And the orientation about the z-axis also looks the same. If you look at the end effector x and y axes and the end effector of the x, y axis here. So both solutions are giving me the exact same location of the end effector when I have two different configurations. One of them is elbow down, one of them is elbow up. Okay. So this shows and demonstrates how we can have multiple solutions for the exact same uh, end effector uh, pose or position and orientation.